Hmm, yeah, I'm doing what's that. Yeah. Doing awesome. Trying to live life at large, you know, pushing things, you know, like always seeking the next level. I feel like life is about challenging yourself, you know, to actually try and explore what is above you, you know, in both realms of like personal development, finance, you know, even spirituality to some level. I feel like it is also cardinal to the human psyche and also being able to live a holy a worldly complete life, you know. So yeah, that's just the thing that has been keeping me a bit busy here and there. Not knowing about you that side. Yeah, I mean at one point of time I think that it is I mean we need to seek help from the higher consciousness also. Mm -hmm. Yes, higher yeah. people because we may we may not know what is going on and what will happen next. So we just mm. seek help from the higher power. Yes, yeah, very much true. Because at one yeah. point of time, at one point of time, we are stuck in life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much, very much. Yeah, and I also argue about the point like there are a lot of people, you know, who claim to say no, me, I don't believe in a higher power. I don't believe that there is a higher intelligence. I just believe that uh, this is all science and everything. But the reality is like different, you know. There just comes that time in life when everything just ceases, you know, like everybody whom you were relying on, they're unable to help you in any single way, form or shape, you know, yes. then you find that you're just stuck. So there's a form of a higher power that is required. Yes, yes. And right now, I think this is my time right now where I'm just, I am stuck. I don't know where to go, what will be happening next. Then just seeking mm -hmm. from the higher power, and I, I may get some insight to where mm -hmm. to do next, what to do next. Yeah, very much. Yeah, and some also believe in the gut feeling, right? What kind of gut feeling you are having? Okay, so we have Vikram you know, in the house. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, Vikram. What's up? Yes, fine. Yeah, we were discussing about the higher power, and uh, I mean, at times we are just stuck, right? Uh, right now, I'm in the situation, and we must be all in the situation where we are just stuck, and we don't know what would would be the next move and where we will go. So at that times, we will definitely seek for higher consciousness and, and higher power. So what do you think about that? What is your views about that? Yes, they are the situation when we just completely feel blank and just numb as well. We always try to seek for the people who gives us right advice. So, just easily tackle those kind of challenges and setback. Yes, it happens to everybody's lives, but uh, most of the time that uh, we just approach to the close people those who could just listen to us, understand us. Yeah, uh, could yeah, be but... your just parents. It's real friends. And yes, I would like to say that because whenever you just go through this kind of situation and you just feel like quitting up, you feel like giving up and you just tense. Sometimes like you does not just feel like being shy that, no, you're just crying. You're just crying because of that you have to go through that excruciating pain, right? Yes, yes. So sometimes yes. just feel like that we should just cry. It will just lighten our just moods. Yes, it yes. It doesn't mean that we should just put ourselves in the situation right now. We are just boys. We are a man. We should just cry. So we yes. are not taught from our just parents to be cry. Yeah, yeah, but that is not the fact. That is not the truth, right? Men do cry. Every human, when you are a human, you will be definitely crying. Because you will be getting yes. let, let go of your emotions. And what is emotion? Emotion is energy in motion. So you are letting go of the stress and all the things, right? All negativity in the form of tears, maybe. Yes. Yeah, so Nipasi, what do you think about crying of men? What do you think? Right, so, uh, okay, it's a good question. 
in general, what I think is that uh, as a biological instinct, instinctively, we are all human by nature. And uh, being human, it's just like imperative that we have to feel different emotions at different times, depending on the situation. So having said that, I believe like uh, to a higher purpose or degree, that uh, this idea of masculinity has been misconstrued. You know, people think that, no, as a man, you have to be tough, you know. thick show like a uh, crocodile skin that a, a person who is like tough a truly tough man who always allow himself to feel to feel vulnerable you know like if you see someone who is cry, like crying right in this day and age it takes a lot of like it takes a lot of courage to show yourself your true color about how you feel so i feel like a person who is crying is something which doesn't mean like you no know, someone is like weak or what. I also believe that crying crying is not just a matter of dropping the tears, but um, it's just the ability to for you to be able to express certain feelings which are like not happy, you know. So a person who is courageous enough to feel vulnerable, I believe that that's a person who is strong compared to someone who is no me. I can't cry, you know me. I'm in, I'm a marine, so on and so forth. Even the study shelf shows, if you see these people, these veterans, you're going to find that there's a large percentile of these people in these like PTSD hospitals in the end who end up killing themselves, you know, because they have not allowed themselves to actually, yes. they automate like they are robots, you know. Yeah, so that's my thought on the same. Yeah, yeah. But on the other end, we are also making humans as a robots nowadays. You see, mm -hmm, 100%, 100%. You see AI yeah. everywhere. So we are at some point of time. And also, whenever. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes whenever we just give our just appearance in front of the others, and when we just feel like crying, it means that we are exposing our just weakness as well, right? So I think that this could be considered as a like negative way as well. Because every time you couldn't just cry, right? Like there are some yeah. expert who yes, go ahead. Okay, yeah, yes, I think uh, it is. The, it has to drop down to the level of like being able to control your emotions. You know, like there are these type of people who are unable to control their emotions depending on the situation. So. Uh, mm -hmm. How can I say this? If you look at the issue of rape, right? There are some people who do that because basically they are not able to control their own emotions. They have not harnessed their emotions. So on the issue of crying, it has to do with a bit of deliberate action and thinking to say, what emotion is actually going to be favorable for me at this moment? Vulnerability mm -hmm. is also important at certain times, it's not every time, yeah, one person has to be crying because <laughs> that would just mean that uh, there's no, there's lack of stability in the emotions, you know, but there's also a time and place for that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also I would like to highlight the scenarios, like uh, since we have been through the corona pandemic, right? So the situation yes. was completely worst. So mm -hmm. we can see that lots of the family members and they just kept on just losing their just respect, respective family members, respective the, mm -hmm. their members, could be their son, could be their just parents, could be uh, like uh, their just husband as well in front of them. So after after one kind of the, after one family members just got deceased, they just, we just feel like so much crying. We just so in our slots of the emotions towards the particular person those we have just lost and after that when the same incident just happened and happened like a second person third person just got died and after we just feel like that it just makes us a study from inside we doesn't just feel that much of the vulnerable that we used to have i used to show at the first instant right mm -hmm. Yeah, so but it also yeah. depends if the if the people are having lots of the adversity in their life, definitely they will just become completely sturdy and concrete. 
right they they don't have emotion at the time mm -hmm. like see it's like see poor people and orphan peoples they're completely habitual with this kind of the setbacks and adversities mm -hmm. like uh, and if you could go through the rich kind of the people they even if they just get a heart like they just fell down and get a heart they just tends to cry easily right mm -hmm. but see the poor people those who are just begging and just are spending their just most of the time without the food even if they rarely tends to cry mm -hmm. so that's the reason as well yeah mm -hmm. Hundred percent. <laughs> yes, Josepha. Yeah, that's why some of the people when just they just lost the loved ones, they are not expressing any kind of emotions, right? They are just actually putting the emotions inside and not letting out, right? And and after some point of time or maybe few days later, they will feel that okay, I lost that one. I lost my loved one, and then now they will express their emotions. So that kind of feeling will also be there. Yeah, maybe if I can say something there. Yeah, I feel like that's a good point to raise, like on the issue of emotional stability. So the whole idea of uh, being tough, there is a point where there is just a breakdown. At some point, it can be useful at a certain time and place. But again, when you extend it to a larger, like to a larger horizon, you're going to find that if you feel like you feel sad because of something that has happened, it's human nature to feel like you, you've lost something because that's how we've evolved, you know, as the whole human race. We've evolved by staying together in the couch, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So now, when you lose something, you consider part of you, right? Then you say, you feel like crying is not for you. You say, no, I'm a tough person whatsoever. You're going to realize that at some point again, those emotions are not going to go away. They will be compressed inside of you. So they will start expressing themselves in a way that is even more negative compared to if you had just released them. You know, it's more like uh, the saying goes, you can be anything, you can be anything but expressive. So, yeah, I feel like the more you, it's more like you're holding like thorns in your hands, you know, the more you compress too much instead of letting out, the more it will borrow inside and to in turn inevitably come out one way or the other. So even the issue of emotional bandwidth, you know, like it's all about caliban being able to express yourself adequately, depending on the situation. Because you see, there's also that part of accountability, you know, like yeah, things I, I totally agree with what you said previously. Yeah, let's see. I've even I wanted to know the name. Yes, Mr. Vikram. Yeah, I agree with the point you said about the background and issues like that. Yeah, there are some people who have like extreme hard backgrounds, you know, like here where I'm in Africa, there's some places like Kenya, people have been like four days without food, six days, that type of life, you know. So you're going to realize that if uh, we put it in a perspective of someone who wants to better their life, to live more, more fruitful, there's uh, a time when you need to actually say that, okay, yes, okay, the place and the things that have happened to me are not favorable. But now if I just continue being so, so feminine, like you're so just, you have so, you're so feminine, right? Like you're so soft. You're going to realize that nothing will change. So that's when now that part of accountability and ownership comes in so that you may be able to change that thing compared to just staying stagnant and playing victim mode. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean. yeah, I agree with you. And, and, and another, another point comes, when we see someone crying, right? When we see someone in trouble, we are also having that kind of emotion because we're emotionally connected. So then mm -hmm. we will ask the person, what is going on? Why are you crying? We will try to help that out. We will try to help that person. So there is also another side when we when it comes to emotional kind of thing. Yeah. Hello. Yes. <clears throat> yes, I also want to just point out like two of the things like you could see police officers, right? You could also see like uh, the lifestyle of 
like defense people like could be army person like they are completely emotionless mm-hmm. they are just prematurely ready for any kind facing any kind of the obstacles in they just like because they are just trained like that right so yeah. also that if you also go through that kind of situation definitely there will be a point you can be a emotionless people yeah but that's true that's 100% true mr vikram like um if someone is specialized to deal with the heart you know like uh, you're talking about a cardiologist if a cardiologist has a phobia of some kind in terms of treating that patient during the operation procedure if you fear cripples that surgeon or the same cardiologist you're going to find that they won't perform to the level of expectation you know like they will mess up one or the other because they are afraid so um, i can argue again to say that uh, the if those same soldiers in the battleground they were anything but emotionless they will, it's easy for them to be actually defeated by the other the other opponents you know because if at all you see somebody a marine they say right who is uh, or, or maybe a navy and they are going for war and if that person has uh, is highly sentiment you know, like you know they have high sentiments of fear they feel emotions like and if they see someone who is who dies maybe that in short they will have that they will just stop break they will just reset you know as a result it also be easy for them to be actually acquired by the target so i feel like yeah the large part of uh, our up- upbringing shapes our whole psyche and the ability to process and perceive perceive things again uh, it's also possible for someone who had that background to have what is known as like brain fluidity you know like being able to train yourself to be able to process other emotions i believe that it's possible even regardless if they told me the background was so bitter there's always that part in like you are able to juggle your brain you know to activate different parts of the brain like one person can be can be left brain right brain and they can see the balance to be able to actually juggle the whole thing and succeed yes and also we can depends a lot Hello? of factors yes good we can also give a deep insight towards our just neighbors right on towards our person whom we are not that much attached of could be our just village people could be our just city people if you can see that if someone mishap just happened with the some family members in the neighborhood right like they just got deceased for the some cause so mm-hmm. we can see that we are not that much emotional yeah with the person at the time the person who around with the particular cops they will just tends to cry a lot right they will screaming towards the cops but we doesn't just feel like just crying why because of we are not emotionally connected with the particular person who just got deceased who has left the world mm-hmm. so it also depends on the person whom we just so much like or adore the person. if we just, if there is a person whom we adore definitely we are completely emotional connected or just so our just tantrums of the person mm-hmm. yes you are right there are a lot of factors which depends upon getting emotional guilt out or crying and and also and also see the situation when the doctor visits the op or, or or where they just go through the autopsy test of the particular person they just feel completely emotionless because they are completely habituated with the those like uh, dissecting the body parts and just take it out and doing lot of the stops like it seems like so much negative for us that we couldn't just indulge this kind of things right we just feel like so much crying if we just see this kind of the act uh, just happening by the doctors yes yes so like it also depends that while just growing up what kind of the scenario that we have been just gone through right if you are the person that was completely in in the room and doesn't just have this kind of scenario definitely 
all of a sudden if this kind of scenario created definitely we tends to cry we tends to show our emotions we couldn't just curb our emotion right yes i agree with you yes Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's why I also I lost you there. My network cut, but yeah, it's true. And uh, again, I feel like certain emotions are important at different situations. You can use a certain emotion to help you prepare you towards something you desire. Even the same practitioners are gonna realize that yes, to some level, everybody is emotional because we're we are just human, right? But again, there is also a certain thing like you just have to perform the guidance of the way you're feeling, you know. You it's it's more like you're just turning on a different emotion. So I feel like if we us as humans were able to control our feelings to certain things, we're able to pursue, produce results. Like an example I can give to make this more clear is uh, somebody who has felt anger, right? When you're angry, like you just feel a certain level of dopamine, you know, like you're able to fight and punch and do that. If at all, there's a certain task, you know, you have to, to accomplish, you don't feel motivated, right? But if you are genuinely like angry at the situation you are at, you can use that same feeling or emotion to actually push you again to do the same workout. A good example of this would be maybe going to the gym, you know, like you're trying to lift certain dumbbells, but you've always been failing because the weights are too heavy. To so a calculated level, if you know that okay, you can do this, but you're not able, you know, if, I, if you're able to actually combine that feeling of anger, it can help you to actually be able to do a lot of things. And you can apply this to a wide spectrum of things in life. Some things maybe you might be feeling fear to accomplish them. You're able to just turn on and switch off different emotions to be actually be able to do that thing. So it all goes back to the same issue of uh, the mind being full fluid, like emotional fluidity, you know, like you're not just like a robot, you know, you're able to to see things and be creative with the mind. I feel like if this is just the key which a lot of people use to be successful. Yeah, so what you're trying to say is that if you're having an anger, right, and you can convert that anger into doing more so workout, right? That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. Right. I mean, it's not... It's necessary to express yourself. Expression is necessary. When you don't express, then it will it will have a bad effect on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I also wanted to say about the issue of sadness. Like, if you see the hype that is going on around in the world, you're going to find that there is. I was once in this group for depressed people. I just wanted to see the conversation people have in those groups. So there were some people who were saying, no, I feel like killing myself. It, you see, I feel sad, so I just kill myself. So if you look at the world now, the trajectory of the world, okay, it's obvious, like a lot of things, it's just a programming, you know, to make people to feel vulner vulnerable and that they are not able to control their own lives. Like they are not the master of their own destiny, you know? So even sadness, you know, like sadness is... Uh, because of the way the world is, is like one of the top emotions people are actually bombarded with nowadays. So even for sadness, you're gonna find that people say the way people do, even these these rappers, that they are the ones who like control the whole paradigm of the universe to some level, you know, because a lot of people engage in listening to rap music, so on and so forth. So um, you're going to find that some people resort to drugs because of um, following these same people they idealize to say, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling sad, you know, just resort to drugs, you know, these are dehumanizing activities. So even for sadness, I believe that you can turn that negative emotion to produce something that is positive, you know, instead of you, like when you feel sad, you feel like you are wobbling, start taking drugs, you can actually 
convert that energy, you know, like into anger at some level and try to do something productive, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you are actually trying to say to convert that into something, you know, the channeling your energy. Channeling, yeah. channeling your negativity stuff into positivity. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah, you got your point here. But on the other hand, you also uh, explained that people are just forcing people uh, in order to overcome the sadness for drugs, for the exchange of drugs. They can use the drugs to minimize the sadness, but they are not showing the correct path that they can convert that sadness into positivity. But yeah, they're yeah. channeling their energy mm-hmm. from negativity to positive stuff. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, the point. That's the really good point, actually. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Mostly people, those who are encompasses with the wines, because of others people have the side must have like this particular wine might just deteriorate the body uh, body parts of the pers- particular person those who are having but definitely they are just all instance goes to want to uh, uh, become just completely em- emotionless and the particular wine just helps you out right mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly yeah, but on the other end, when we think it's a kind of addiction, right? You are just addicted to drugs, and you you cannot sustain <laughs> the life without without taking drugs. So it is it is very much dangerous. Yeah, very much actually. Yes. Um, I think when the same. Sorry for cutting you there. I believe that if at all your life is a mess, there are just two reasons that that thing is happening. Number one is either. You're not actually doing as hard as you you might be doing like you're not ha- working hard enough and the second reason that thing might just happen is because you know how life is like there's just some things which are inevitable like maybe there's just something that you just came up asunder you know like just uh something that is bad generally speaking which you can't control maybe loss of family member etc those things it's normal to feel sad and one person needs to accept that I'm sad and do not try to fight it, you know, because in the end, we're all human. That is one part, like acceptance. When you accept that you're feeling sad, it's easy for you not to feel sad, you know, because you're not resisting that emotion. That is the one part. And uh, going to the other one by extension, when you're not doing hard enough, like when you're not pushing hard enough, you know that you can be doing more than you're not doing. There will be just that debris, you know, like, there'll be a bit of mental fatigue. Like if you're in the comfort zone, right? right? Like the comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing beautiful ever grows there. So you're going to find that you'll be fighting against yourself because, you know, you can do better. So now a lot of people, instead of working on themselves to actually be better, what they do is they resort to drugs. And drugs, instead of drugs to, um, to make them feel better, in the end, they are amplifying the same sickness, you know, like it's just a loop, a cycle of continuous and ending sadness. I think I can attribute this to the, uh, I feel it's the Vikings. There was this war, which I don't know if it was fiction. I read it somewhere. Like um, there was this war about a certain group of people, a group of people, group A and group B. So these guys, we are like fighting one another, you see. So now for group A, what they used to do was each time they would see their opponents coming, they would start taking down the bricks, the bricks they were having, the walls for their same empire or their own city, throwing at those enemies there. So the enemies would always come closer. Then when those people would throw the same bricks, the enemies would go further. So the enemies devised the plan to say, oh, look at these guys. What they're doing is they are actually tearing down their own city throwing away their precious uh, debris, which they know, which is an, a protective shield, trying to chase us away, N- not knowing that they are leaving themselves vulnerable. So in the end, what happened was the whole war was collapsed, you know, and those guys never had any um, any ammunition to actually fight off. In, in the end, they lost. So, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, you take drugs, you feel happy for a while, but in the end... It will just keep amplifying the same sickness or like the same sadness and just a continuous loop of annihilation, you know. Yeah, that's really a great story. I mean, this, that's a really just what you just told. Why are you feeling <laughs> sadness? And it's a really great example. I really enjoyed what you just said. <laughs> yeah.
and so it's kind of loophole and it we goes we go much deeper right every now and then taking more and more drugs consulting more and more doctors and there is no end to it. but we must seek for end what is the end result what am i getting out of it yeah so people are wasting much of it life on drugs taking alcohol taking medicines and all the stuff to get rid of depression anxiety stress sadness mm-hmm. yeah and once they are into it then they will find very much difficult to get out of it so yeah they, 100% yeah and so they will look for rehab and other facilities mm-hmm. but yeah on the other end we must choose to stay on to other part in the beginning itself don't just do mm-hmm. drugs and medicines and all the other stuff mm-hmm. yeah Yeah, and if you look at the world now, it's the trajectory of the world is messed up. Like I always look at the figures, you know, like I always see what's happening. You're gonna find that these uh, there's always an agenda to everything that's happening. There is so called like uh, the whole health industry per se, like it's just a massacre, you know. Like um, if you look at these so called world artists, you know, these people who are famous singing. If you follow their lyrics properly, you're gonna realize that a lot of them are just dumbing down and the same issue, you know, depression, 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 so on, making that thing to just be like a physical entity which does exist. But if you look at the impact it's presenting on the youth, military age people, so on and so forth, it's just uh, annihilation alone. So it's an agenda. It's always an agenda. You know, like their goal, their aim is to increase their revenue in these in these same pharmaceutical industries, if they they produce these same mind numbing drugs, to say yes, they yes. are actually yes, I agree. Can't... With you. I agree with you one hundred yeah. percent. It's just yeah, a market. You know, like... it's a huge market to make money. Yeah, they don't care about the people. Just want money, which is a terrible thing, you know. It's a terrible thing because. Even the common person who would have been great in one level, they are all falling, falling prey to the same thing. You know? Instead of a person to take responsibility and realize that uh, the reason they're feeling the way they're feeling is because they're not doing as they could do. Rather, they're just taking all their savings onto the same pill, you know, this magical pill to say all your problems will be fulfilled, you'll be well. Making them victims, you know, in the end, this one just nothing happens, you know, nothing productive happens or comes out of it. So it's just a matter of awakening, you know, to the out of this same matrix and realizing that um, the whole thing is a scam, <laughs> the whole thing is a facade, you know, like and realizing that the ownership is oneself. Like you can't rely on any news outlet now for proper information because, yeah, that's number one. Yeah, that's why people just avoid news because they, when they just watch news, they are bombarded with negativity. Exactly. I've never seen any news that where they are telling news to say no. Today, uh, I've never seen a news article which starts and finishes without any negative outlet. And seventy percent of the news is just negativity. You know, they'll just tell you no. Know, there was this accident that happened here ten miles ago. All those things are just like. Negativity, so that people are they are ROI, like uh, yeah, their RIS reticular activation system is just focused on the negative, you know. And when you focus on the negative, you can't actually be productive because you are just scared, you know. They're making you feel as if the world is a bad place and you can't thrive. So yeah, the news, the same music industry, the health industry. And a lot of things are just always schema, you know, to some level. So it's schema. Yes, yes, you're right, 100%. Yeah. So we can really last thought in on it. Yes, definitely. Because right now, news becomes a overhype, right? It's a kind yeah. of the advertisement of particular religions. 
rights or communal right rights communal rights yeah so whenever we just keep on watching this kind of news definitely our just brain thinks like that and whenever we indulge in conversation to somebody we always we see it like a debate we always wanted to just bond right Mm-hmm. Yeah. So somehow that we try to validate our just point or invalidate the other's point. We don't allow ourselves to listen to them because mm-hmm. what we are just hurt like, and that particular thing is just lingering around your just brain. You couldn't stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Se cansa. Se cansa. No. It starts slowly. <laughs> In the end, it damages you. Hmm. Yes, it's a poison. Give us yeah. slowly. Mm. So we have three minutes left till this meeting will end. So you can oh. give final thoughts. Yeah, you can give the final thoughts if you want. All right. So I'll start. So for me, I believe that uh, regardless of uh, the emotions and everything that has happened to someone, their background, etc. If that person genuinely wants to live a life which is explained, you know, like yes, um, succinct to a certain level with their own core, if they want financial freedom, whatever, doesn't matter your background, you can always uh, do that thing. Doesn't matter the way you were treated, doesn't matter the hand you were dealt, you can always do it. As long as you believe it and you don't give in to this garbage, anything is possible. Yeah, that's my thought. Yeah, right. Yes, and also I, I would like to just point out one thing. Like whenever I just goes on the street, goes on the roads, I, I could see that there are a lot of the people who are on the bikes, cars, and then they, they just feel like just rushing to their station. It's like, it le- seems like that they are going to win like crores or even the million, billions rupees that if they just go to destination as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. But I think that now, right now, that the situ- right now the era it seems like that people are struggling a lot to just find a peace. People are just having billions, millions, but their just brains are not settled or just getting a kind of a peace satisfaction. Yes, they are always yeah. seems like in a tension, feel like not talking to any kind of people. <laughs> Avoiding talking to you unless they they are having any kind of benefit to you. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, life is a race. People just think that life is a race, and one needs to win it. Right? So they are yeah. choosing the stuff right in the right from the morning till the night. They're just running, running, yeah. running. They never take a time. Yes, to and we also what's feel... inside them. Mm-hmm. They're ne- never taking the time to what to look inside for them. What is inside? Mm-hmm. Them. Yeah, it all comes. And to also, you can see that. Yes. Yeah. Should I speak on? Yes, you... You yeah, I'm go trying ahead to say that. that. I'm trying to say whenever I spot myself on the road. So if some people are happen to meet an accident. Definitely, most of the people they doesn't just approach to the particular body who are lying on the scene and they are just craving, uh, craving for just help, right? So what do we do? That we just take out the phone and just start making a videos on them, and just don't care that how the people are just going through with their just pain, right? So rather than what we should do, that avoiding just taking this kind of the photos or kind of the videos, we should just take them as soon as possible to the hospital.